Hello and welcome to the short form contract webinar. This module will help you understand when to use the short form contract with the aid of a case study. Before we start, a few things to take note of. This webinar is produced by the ICT Commercial Strategy Team with specific learning objectives. The content is not intended to be comprehensive, nor does it constitute legal advice. The objectives of this webinar are to understand the New South Wales Government requirements for procuring ICT products and services, to identify fundamental elements of the Procure IT short form contract and to identify potential risks and essential items needed when building the short form contract. A bit of background on how we buy. New South Wales government agencies can buy ICT services by engaging in either of the two ways. The New South Wales Government Contract or Panel Contracts, like the Whole of Government Hardware Contract 999, or from suppliers approved on the ICT Services Scheme, Scheme 0020. There are two categories of suppliers on the ICT Services Scheme. Registered suppliers who are signed up to provide services for contracts which are up to $150,000, which are deemed low risk, and advanced suppliers who can be engaged with for work over $150,000, essentially high risk. When engaging with suppliers on low risk contracts, you should use the short form ICT general contract terms. But when you engage suppliers on high risk contracts, which are over $150,000, you will need to use the long form procure IT contract. The procure IT framework must be used by New South Wales government buyers for the acquisition of ICT related products and services. The short form contract is specifically used when engaging with suppliers on the registered supplier list who are providing products and services up to $150,000 and are deemed low risk. So where can you find a copy of the contract? You can navigate through ProcurePoint when you click on Before You Buy. You can then find the standard procurement contract templates link. When you click on that, it'll take you to the short form contracts link. When you click on that link, it'll take you to a beta website, which houses all the contract documents, including the short form contract. Let's now look at a case study to understand when and how we use the short form contract. In this case study, we will review a department's request for assistance in determining the best course of action when purchasing under the Procure IT framework. In the given scenario, a government employee wants to engage a contractor to develop a website for the said department. He has a small enough budget of $50,000. The employee deems the project low risk but he has no experience undertaking any procurement activity and is not familiar with New South Wales government ICT contracts. So let's have a look how we can guide this employee and still adhere to the Procure IT framework. Having said that, there are a few peculiarities to the project. This project is classified and the department is worried about the news of this project leaking to the press. To keep everything under wraps, they want to nominate which personnel can work on this project, approve the people working on the project, and they want the department to own the IP in the work undertaken. At the onset, the first basic question which needs to be answered is, do we use the ICT short form contract in this scenario? The answer is yes, provided the team are satisfied that it's a low risk job and the contract spend is under $150,000.
Risk assessment seems an important element in this scenario. The government employee thought the project is low risk as it costs under $150,000, but how can they accurately assess the risk of the project? Should they ask the supplier what the risks are? Should they undertake risk assessment via the risk register? Or is there no need to take an un undertake a risk assessment at all? The second option is the correct answer. To, under the Procure IT framework, a risk assessment is needed even for low risk projects. Asking the supplier for all risks involved was partially correct as you, you're not certain that you're getting all the information needed. Let's now examine, given the scenario, what additional items should be implemented on the ICT short form contract. Let's take a few moments to look at the three options. Option 1 lists a fair few elements. Option 2 says no information is required. And option 3 states that only terms of engagement and total contract price is needed. Option 1 is the correct answer in this case. A fair few items are needed to be implemented, which include terms and conditions, scope, contract price, payment methods, amongst other things. Another question to consider would be about employee details and confidentiality requirements. It's important to have these details in. Therefore, which clause contains this obligation? Would it be clause 18 or clause 16? The correct answer is clause 18. It contains information regarding confidential obligation on both parties. Let's conclude this session with one last question. Given the secrecy of the project, can the government employee restrict the personnel who work on this project? Yes, indeed they can. Item 9 under the ICT short form contract provides this condition. And with this, we have reached the end of our training module on the ICT short form contract. We hope you found it useful. And if you have any questions or feedback, you can reach us at nswby at finance.nsw.gov.au. Thank you.